Okay, notebooks, please, notebooks. Let's take a look at our first example. So the lady comes out to break I to take it right now, you can. No? And come either after school or during break. You're at their lunch now. Yes. Or learning lunch, actually. Lunch might be best. Break right break on that time. Now, we are starting. We are starting solving systems algebraically. Remember, all we've done so far is graphically. We're going to solve these algebraically. Now, for some of you, this is going to be nice and easy. For some of you, it's going to be difficult. And I'm going to tell you that right now. Depending on the type of learner you are, this topic can be really easy or it can be really tough. So make sure you figure out which person you are. So if you need extra help on this, you're able to come see me about it. Okay? Now, you've seen this already in Algebra 1, just for a little prerequisite. You have seen this before. Okay, so everybody should be familiar in some sense. That's elimination. We're going to do that until tomorrow. I'm going to do substitution. And there's a reason we use both. So, the first topic we're going to look at is substitution method. The second is elimination. Now, if you ever can choose, again, if you ever can choose, and the functions all happen to be linear, so there's no squared symbols, I suggest you use elimination. We're using substitution first here because when we get to quadratics and linears together, we can't use elimination. We've got to use substitution. When we look at the SAT problems, which we're going to look at two examples of SAT problems after this, we're going to see you cannot use elimination every time. Sometimes you have to use substitution because everything is in variables. There will be no numbers sometimes. Like, see how we have numbers here? The 2 and the 4, the 3, the 2, and the, one, and the 11. Again, each of these values, we're given numerical coefficients. If we're not, sometimes we're going to have to use substitution method. Okay? So we're going to learn both of them. We're going to spend today going over substitution. We're going to spend tomorrow doing elimination. All of your homework problems will be word problems, every one of them. Okay? For each of these examples, we're going to start with a system. The next two examples will be word problems. Then for elimination, we'll start with a system like this, and then two examples of word problems. Okay? Again, this is one of those topics that is seen on every single SAT, and it's one of the easiest ones to get good points on. Okay? You don't have to spend a lot of time, you know the tricks. And if you can pick up on it right away, it helps you a lot instead of sitting there and reading the problem like four or five times. That's the hardest thing for a lot of students, is making the equations from the word problem. Solving these equations is actually very basic math. Okay? Now, the title of this is Substitution. Can I get a volunteer to tell me what they think we're going to be doing here for this kind of a problem? Isela? Um, like, 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 Absolutely. Since this is substitution, we're going to take this 2x plus 4 here, and we're going to substitute it in for y right there. Again, substitution method. Take a look. In each equation, you have two variables. So you can't solve in any equation until you eliminate or get rid of one of the other variables. Now, tomorrow when we do elimination method, you'll see why it's called elimination. Because we're literally just going to eliminate stuff off. Here, we're substituting, which has an end result of eliminating a variable. Again, let's write this line now with the substitution shown. Okay? And clearly we can see that we've eliminated the variable y. The equation that is resulting right now, the equation that we have now, gets rid of the variable y. So, I'm going to say this as my little command. Plug 1 into 2. And I want you to be writing this stuff. I'm telling you now, if you write this, it will be so much easier. If you're able to define what you're doing in words every time, the problem will get a lot simpler. And you know what else is good? When you get an answer, and you check your answer, and if that answer isn't right, you can go back and say, okay, what did I do here? And you have all the words written. And you can say, wait, I plugged one into two, but I didn't do it correctly. That's not what that shows there. i got to go back and stop. Okay? Again, I'm telling you guys now, especially with elimination, we'll do that in a minute. Writing down your commands is so important. And I was mentioning to Luis last week, he asked for something after school. If you remember, we did the stuff with the rows. We did R1 goes into R3 and stuff. That's what I'm talking about. So it's very important, it's vital for you to keep track of what you're doing with your steps. 
okay, all the way through linear algebra. So through, cal through calculus one, calculus two, linear algebra, you're going to use this topic. You're going to use reduction by hand. You've got to write your steps down. It will help you a lot. So at this point in time, we see that we only have x. Anybody solve this one yet? It's 10. What do you get? 10. 10, and then I heard 19. Let me check what I got. Oh, for x? For x, for x. Oh, x is 3. X is 3. I thought x was 19. X is 3. Make sure you distribute the negative 2 to both things. Oh, negative. It should be 3x minus 4x minus 4. Again, it should be 3x minus 4x mi I'm sorry, minus 8. Wow, minus 4, what am I saying? 3x minus 4x minus 8 equals negative 11. Add the 8 to both sides. You're going to get a negative 3 on the right side. You're going to get negative x equals negative 3. Negative x equals negative 3. Positive x equals positive 3. Okay? Again, simplify on your own, please. Simplify on your own. Now, once I have x, what else do I want? Y. How do I get that, Jay? Uh, you just put the back in. Where? The, the, the x. In which equation? One or two? Uh, the first one. Why the first one, Jason? Because um, we need to solve for y. Absolutely correct. Again, Look at the first equation. Isn't it already solved explicitly for y? It says y equals, and you want y. So if you plug the 3 in for x in that equation, you get 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 4 is 10. y is 10. Again, plug in this 3, take this value of 3, plug it in right up there. And you will get y equals 3. Oops, let me extend this page a little y equals 2 times 3 plus 4. Now, once I've got x and y, how can I write the answer? Again, we're looking at a solution like we did with the graph. How did you write your solution? What was it? x comma y. You write it as a coordinate. Again, so here, 3 comma 10 with parentheses around it. Okay? Again, write it as a coordinate. You're listing an ordered pair. You're listing a solution. And okay? whenever you list a solution, you want to list the x and the y better. And the only time we didn't do that was on the back of our homework on the top, on the back. Now, at this point, is it okay that we go on to a word problem? Does everybody understand the logistics of substitution? Again, you solve for one of the variables, you plug it into the other equation. So, in our case here, wasn't y already solved for? Yeah, so we didn't have to solve for it. But if it wasn't solved for, we got to get the variable by itself and then plug it in here, like we did in our first set. Okay? All right, let's look at the next problem. Now, again, this one is going to be an example that they've seen many times in the SAT. We have several different variables that you're solving for in terms of other variables. So you can't see it on the dictate. It says, suppose 3x equals y plus 5. And 2y minus 2 equals 12k. Solve for x in terms of k. Solve for x in terms of k. I'm going to list the equations a little bit bigger so you can see them. Now, Somebody tell me, how many different variables do I have here? What is it? Three. We have x, we have y, we have k. So clearly, we're not going to get an answer as a number. Please write that note down. You have three variables and only two equations. You will not get a numerical answer here. Okay? Again, you have three variables and two equations. There are very rare exceptions where you get a numerical answer when certain things cancel out. Okay? But when you have three variables and two three variables and two equations, there's a good chance you're going to solve for a variable in terms of another variable. What does in terms of mean? If I said like this problem it says, solve for x in terms of k. What does that mean? You can explain in layman's terms what that means. Here you go. Okay. We're going to plug it in, but what I want to know, Miguel. What does solve for x in terms of k actually mean? Like, what should your answer look like? Isn't it solve for x times root 
Okay, using K, what does that mean, using K? You're going to use the equation you have for K, but that's not what solve for X in terms of K means. K is going to be in the answer. Please write this down. When you get X equals something, you're going to get X equals something with a K. In terms of K is synonymous for K is going to be in the answer. Again, your final answer will say X equals, it might be like 3K plus 2. K will be in the answer. So you're pretty much writing a formula. You're writing an expression that relates two different things. So for example, like area equals pi r squared. If the problem might say, what is the radius in terms of the area? Well, that's just the area over pi with the square root around it. You solve for r in terms of the area. Okay, again, you're solving for one thing. The other thing is in the answer. So with that said, clearly my x and k are not in the same equation. So I can't get them related here. And they're not in the same equation here. So I can't get them related here. But I see that something's in both equations. Why? Why? So what can I do with them? I can plug them in or somehow eliminate the y or combine these equations in some fashion. Now, in the first equation, if I want to get y by itself, what do I have to do? Subtract the 5, Subtract the five on this side. Good. If I want to get y by itself here, what do I have to do? Add, 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 add 2 and then? And then divide by 2. Which takes less steps? The first way, right? So solve for y in the first equation and then plug it in the second. So in the first equation, you're going to get 3x minus 5 equals y. Now, here's what I want you to write, guys. If we call this equation 1, because we want a number, and we call that equation 2, call this equation 1a, because I've altered the first equation. Again, call it equation 1a. Whenever you change something around, give it a new name. You change equation 1, so call it equation 1a. Now, I can then say plug 1a into 2. That could be my command. I'm taking what I have for 1a, which is y equals 3x minus 5, and I'm going to take this value and plug it in right there in equation 2. And you're going to notice that you're going to have x and you're going to have k in the same equation. And then just solve for x. Let's go through that process now. When I plug this in, I will get 2 quantity 3x minus 5 minus 2 equal 12k. Now, there's another thing you can do. If you create a new equation from two other equations, you can call that a new equation. So I know we didn't do it in the last example, but I'm trying to step you through here. Call this equation 3 now. Because whenever you create a new equation from two other equations, it's like you have another, uh, another brand new equation here. Okay? You take it to and made a third out of it. We haven't just altered one of them. So we altered equation 1 initially, so we called that 1a. Now that we've created a new equation, we give it a new number to represent like a new level of equations. At this point, we need to solve for x. Solve for x. There are many ways we can do it. We could distribute the 2 and then solve for x. We could subtract that 2, then divide by that 2, then subtract 5, then divide by 3. It's a little bit messy, right? So which way would you guys choose to do it? The first, okay? So please, choose the easier way here. 6x minus 10. 6x minus 10 minus 2 equal to 12k. And now at this point, I'm not going to... I'm not going to continue with 3a, 3b, 3c, because this is my final step. These are my lines to the final answer here. I'm actually at my last equation. I'm not altering an equation to plug in another one now. I've gotten to the final step. I just have to solve for x. So I got 6x minus 12 equal to 12k. I'm getting minus 12 here. Then I add the 12. I get 6x equals 12k plus 12. Divide by 6, divide by 6. What is it? 2k plus 2. And the answer is solve for x in terms of k. Again, the answer says x equals something with a k in it. That's in terms of k. Is that okay? No, yes, maybe so. Yeah, it is.
<laughs> Again, it's a process. It's a process. Number three. I can dictate if you like again, if you're in the back. <clears throat> Jim has seventeen dollars more than Sam. They have seventy-three dollars together. How much money does each of them have? Again, Jim has seventeen dollars more than Sam. They have seventy-three dollars together. How much does each of them have? Now, many of you guys may be able to just to sit there and try numbers in your head and figure it out. And that's fine. And that's good. I'm glad you can do that. But I'm telling you guys now, use, use your, uh, your skills in math, not always your intuition on this kind of a problem. Sometimes they can be a little misleading. Writing the equations helps express what you're thinking much more clearly. Okay? And to be honest with you, once we go through elimination method, you wouldn't even really use substitution because you're going to see that elimination is much quicker. Okay? A lot of the time, it's much quicker. Now, for this kind of a problem, you're going to see why it's actually wise to use substitution. Let's go through this. Let's call Jim and Sam's money some sort of a variable. So give me a suggestion for this. X. X is what? X is what? Jim's money. Jim's money. Think about what's being asked. It says, how much does each of them have? So Jim's amount is X, and what's Y then? Anybody ever hear of something called let statements? The term let statements? Okay. A lot of teachers don't teach that anymore. I don't understand why. This is what it is. You write the word let, and you're basically defining a variable. You say let X equal this, and let Y equal this. Oh. Or suppose X equals this, and Y equals this. So they're called let statements. That's what they are. So always write the word let and let yourself know, I am defining this. When you write the word let, it means that you are choosing variables to represent some sort of a concept or idea. Now, if I know that x is Jim's money and y is Sam's money, can I get a suggestion on a possible equation I can write based on the word problem? Trayvon. And? Okay. Give me one of them only. Uh, y. y. Plus. X. Plus. X. Plus 17? Yeah, equals 73. Equals 73? Yeah. Agree or disagree? Because I hesitated? Yeah. <laughs> a little rough, Jay. Let's see why, Nick. Give me, just, give me just one of them. Give me the one that has a combination of the two. Okay. She said x plus y equals 73. Why didn't you throw the 17 in there? Because she knows the other equation is 17 plus y. Okay, that one's a little backward there, just so you know. But the idea is she, she's actually right with the 17. I know what you're saying. I don't want people to get misled, though. Here, x plus y equals just 73. Just 73, as Victoria said. Because when the problem says together they have $73, well, if x is the amount of money Sam has, and, I'm sorry, as Jim has. Why is the amount of money Sam has? Together means add them up. So you're only adding the amounts they have. Now, Victoria already gave us an allusion to the next one. Does anybody want to give me a suggestion what the next one would definitely look like? Y equals I can't hear you. What is it? Plus X. Let's go through how that we have to make that correction. Okay. It says, Jim has $17 more than Sam. This is Jim. Oh, my bad. See, I did it backwards, guys, on mine. I defined, remember how I talked about let statements in the beginning? My problem, I wrote let x equal Sam's money and y equals Jim's money. So I had it with the reverse of it. So, Anthony, you have to have it over here. Okay, based on the problem that we did. If you guys look in your notes later, please don't let this confuse you. I reverse these two. It doesn't matter which way you do it. It just matters that you have it switched. So, let's go through this again. Jim has $17 more than Sam. This is Jim's money. 17 more than, more than means plus, Sam. Okay? If you take Sam amount and add 17 to it, you get Jim's amount. 
Again, that's what it means to have more than. So if you had, if one person had, I don't know, 37 cents and the other person has 20 cents, you'd say person A has 17 cents more than person B. Well, how'd you get that? You took person B's money, which was 20 cents, and added 17 to it. That's where this comes about. Again, more than means added to that smaller amount. So I have two equations and two variables. What do I have to see already that I have solved for? I have x. Very good, Juliet. In the second equation, I've already got x solved for. So take that value and plug it in for x right there. It could be x plus y. Uh, addition is commutative, you know that. All right, 3 plus 5, 5 plus 3. And when I plug these in, I'm going to see that I get y plus 17 plus y equal to 73. We're going to get from this y equals 45. Dang, y equals 28. Again, I switched mine on my notes, guys. Sorry. Again, mine were backwards. For x, when you plug in, once you know the y value, plug it in right here, please, in equation 2. Again, once you get the y value, plug it in equation 2 because it's solved for x already. Just do 28 plus 17 in equation 2, or 17 plus the 28, and you'll get 45 for x. Now, Here's what I want to point out. It does not matter that I chose to do x and y the other way on my paper because the names are switched. So since my letters are, my variable answers are switched and my names are switched, they're actually the same. So in my conclusion here, I wrote down Sam has $28, Jim has $45. Well, that's the same thing we have here. X is 45. When X is 45, that's Jim. So Jim's money is 45. Sam's money is 28. Again. No matter which way you did it, I still got the same answer. All my variables were switched the whole way, but my definition was also switched. So two things being switched means they really weren't switched. Again, please look at number three on the notes tonight when you look at headline and see how this looks different, but you get the same answer. It's a good lesson to think about afterward. Now, that's the end of substitution. What I want to do now is give you your homework, but tell you exactly which problems I want you to do. I only want you to do certain ones tonight. There are six here total, but I probably only have to do about three of them. Sixteen. Six. Sixteen. Okay, good. Look. I believe it though. Mm -hmm. We have a uh, 17 plus 9. Why is that y squared plus 17? No, it's two y. Okay. Let's see. Number six and number two. Now you're going to do number two twice just for a heads up. So number six and number two. You're going to do number two tonight using substitution, and then you're going to do number two tomorrow using elimination. Okay, just for a heads up. All the other problems you don't have to do once. And numbers one, one, three, four, and five are definitely better to use elimination. So I'm not going to make you do substitution on that. Just for the so I only want you to do number two and number six. Okay? But remember, number two, you've got to solve for one of the variables before you can do anything.